All right. You make great points. My question is, what happens? The government keeps borrowing money from the Federal Reserve, and eventually the Federal Reserve is going to say no, and the government's going to be like, I need to borrow money, man. I need to pay these kids' debt off or whatever the fuck. And they're like, no, we can't loan you any more money. The Federal Reserve, would it do that? If it had enough of an established threshold, because the Federal Reserve is just a tentacle of the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund, which are like two big, large things, corporations above the you know, Federal Reserve, the Bank of London, and the Bank of Australia, I think. Um, it's an Australian bank. And then above that is the brain, which is the central bank of central banks. Maybe the central bank of London, I think. I'm not sure. So if they have enough, you know, and then they all own sh corporations and like, or have investitures in corporations like Bain Capital, who owns, uh, you know, Some something that owns like all the banks or a bank, you know, or like and like Coca Cola, or, but Coca Cola is owned by like they're owned by like places like Bain Capital, like these names you hear of every once in a while, like Mitt Romney invested in Bain Capital. He was like the head of Bain Capital for a while. It's a big investment firm, I guess, which is just a generic term, investment firm for like a puppet firm that's like spends the money of a big money-making firm and this was literally a money-making firm because they make the money okay so what happens is it feasible that they get so powerful elsewhere and they get so disenfranchised with the United States that they stop giving the United States money yes if the United States was destitute and poor and blew itself up the banks would probably leave and just be like yeah, you're on your own fortunately the United States is smart the United States of America, I know there's the United States of Mexico, and I know that Amerigo Vespucci discovered the continent, which is why it's called North and South America, America, and that beyond the labels, the way that the, the white man, or whatever this, is, I mean, there's no white and black, I'm tired of it, you know, but the way that this aggressive natured hot animal attacked and killed a bunch of people so fast, because they valued land, like the value of land, you know, it's so expensive to buy land. If you buy land in Mexico, you'll, your great-grandchildren will be a lot, very wealthy. <sighs> this system is like, so what do you do? We have to pay back the debt, right? This is part of the answer, we can pay back the debt. Now here's the problem. Debt can bulge bigger than the thing causing the debt. And I think our debt might have, might make could do that. It's called a debt aneurysm. And just because it's expanding faster than it's getting bigger. Uh, because of interest. I vote for not paying it back and letting it become useless and having the government create a new currency because the government is the people and the people are in control of what the people do yes some people made a corporation that prints money and in 1913 signed a treaty with the US government to print their money for them they're not a government company they never were it's like owned by like guys with last names of Rothschild and A lot of people, Rothschilds, I'd like to meet him, you know, or her, whoever they are. The uh, Rockefellers, like what a cool name. Carnegie, James Carnegie, I think he was a guy, I don't know. Um, a lot of a lot of them, there's a few other families, there's like seven families, I think, or six families, seven families. But really, I've just been in charge of like banking, steel, I mean, I assume they, they, give, they sell steel to the government for weapons. 
steel making, you know. Anyway, in 1913, they formed the Federal Reserve. And that's what I think, though. You know, just like print our own money. We're all citizens. We can print whatever. They want us to use their money. And I don't blame them. And in fact, I might be talking to you, J.D. Rockefeller. Just kidding, because I think that was an older guy that may have passed on. And it's not meant to be a funny joke. But Rockefeller, Michael Rockefeller, David Rockefeller. I don't know. You know, I know part you want me to use your money, and I am. I have it in my wallet, but debt's insane. Right. Compound interest is ridiculous to impose on a population. So I assume the population imposes it on themselves. That's how the only way someone can use something. And the dollar is very good. Currency itself is very useful to transfer goods. I mean, I'm not suggesting we stop using currency, but what the fuck? Federal Reserve? Just a private bank that we can borrow money from? Why not just print your own money? I mean, that's what you probably thought in 1913. And or in 12 and 11, I was like, geez, government, what the fuck? Do we have to do this for you? Do we have to hold your hand? It's like, I don't want to destroy anyone's livelihood. And I don't want to see other people's livelihoods destroyed. It's, it's a balancing act to get everyone to be able to work together. We can do it. Just take some time, some effort, and some adjustability, and realization that whatever you spend money on, there's going to be more of. So, we got to make, turn platinum into gold, massively increase our gold reserves, because platinum is 78, gold is 79, which means you got a proton to platinum in super high heat, and it turns into gold. Theoretically, this is my theory, is that it's cooked. The earth cooks it, basically bakes it to a nice bronze, gold color. And uh, and then use the gold for cyber technology. Um, eat it, and, you know, mononucleically ingest it. And uh, use that as the dollar. Like, like, base it off of gold if we have to. And then you're, as you make more gold, the value of your dollar increases.